On today's show, things get heated as Elon Musk tries to reopen Tesla's Fremont production facility, but a solution is worked out. Ford confirms the Mustang Mark E actually charges more quickly than it first predicted, and Tesla is going to be putting its breakthrough million mile battery in its Chinese made Model 3s very soon. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we are 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope you're all well and as Lloyd last week, keeping yourself safe as New Zealand slowly gets back to work. As some of you might know, we actually make this video from the US for you all to enjoy. And frankly, I'd rather be in New Zealand right now, believe me. We start today with a battle to reopen the Tesla Fremont production facility. As I noted last week, Elon Musk had planned to reopen Tesla's facility last Friday. The county of Alameda, where the facility is located, informed Musk a shelter-in-place order still existed and thus told Tesla it could not reopen. In response, Musk publicly rallied against county officials, threatened to move Tesla's Californian operations to Texas or Nevada, and sued the county of Alameda. Tesla then went ahead with reopening on Wednesday, defining existing orders and earning itself a visit from the local police. The county told CNBC that Tesla itself delayed approval for reopening by not submitting required site-specific reopening and protection plans, did not screen workers for temperatures, and was not requiring mandatory face coverings. Since Tesla has now received approval for reopening, it does suggest these previous issues have now been ironed out. Silicon Valley-based Cruise, the self-driving startup that General Motors has a majority ownership of, has announced an 8% cut to its workforce. According to those familiar with the company, the majority of the jobs being cut will come from Cruise's engineering, recruiting and human resources departments. This suggests that Cruise is seeking to hunker down to weather out the current health pandemic. Although Cruise is not yet officially operating, at least not to a commercial level, the coronavirus has seen a massive drop in interest in all types of ride sharing on autonomous vehicle services, as consumers worry about increased risks of infection. It's not clear at this time if the cut in staff means that GM will hold back on plans to produce Cruise's custom-designed Origin driverless shuttle, but when we have more information on that, we will, of course, share. Before any new car is brought to market, automakers produce significant numbers of prototype vehicles for pre-production, validation and engineering. And electric car startup Lucid is no exception, producing a whole fleet of test Lucid air cars to refine various aspects of the vehicle's various systems. So this week, Lucid showcased some of those 40 pre-production vehicles, or beta prototypes, it's built for the Lucid Air to date. While most of these vehicles would be out and about under normal circumstances, COVID-19 has delayed some of its planned testing. Lucid said it wanted to take advantage of this and share images and videos of its test fleet parked up together. While some outlets have questioned why Lucid's prototypes are wearing body wraps when we already know what the final car will look like, I think it's part of a clever social media campaign to get the car noticed by both car and non-car people alike. Ever since its official reveal last November, we've known a lot about the upcoming 2021 Ford Mustang Mark E, from its target price tag and features to the launch plans for each market. Despite that reveal, however, Ford has been working hard behind the scenes, revising and improving its original vehicle specifications. And now it's announced that the original quoted charging times for the Mark E are slower than the car is managing in the real world. Sharing data from its engineering fleet, Ford says it's now improved charging times for the rear-wheel drive extended range Mustang Mark E. It now can add 61 miles of range in 10 minutes from a high-power CCS quick charging station. That's far better than the previously quoted 47 miles for the same period of time. Volkswagen has announced it's launched its first official storefront for the ID3 electric car, the first one opening in Dresden, Germany. 
Volkswagen says the purpose of the space is to allow potential customers to get to know the ID3, experience one firsthand, and explore a virtual room where they can learn about the ID3. It's not clear from the press release if these storefronts will exist alongside traditional dealerships or if they'll be completely separate entities. But what is clear is that Volkswagen believes, as so many other automakers now do, that electric vehicles require a different dealership model to traditional cars. This is further evidenced by Volkswagen stating that it hopes the storefronts will soon make it possible for customers to order cars online from within the store itself. Harley Davidson's official figures for the Livewire electric motorcycle are apparently a little on the conservative side. That's according to numerous reports that we've been hearing over the last couple of months. Several YouTubers and several journalists who've put the live wire through its paces say that it can go further and faster. The latest report from Bikes and Beards YouTube channel shows just how pessimistic the figures are. Presenter Sean Kerr borrowed one and he noted that the bike goes five miles per hour faster than its quoted top speed and can manage more than 15 extra miles of range per charge. I should note here though that how you ride, the road conditions and the weather can really impact how far you can go on an electric motorcycle, just like they can in an electric car. The difference? Well, there's a much bigger variation between extremes on the charging range because of physics. Fiat may have only just revealed its all-new 2020 Fiat 500 at the start of the coronavirus pandemic. If you'll remember, it held a virtual launch event rather than the planned auto show reveal. But nevertheless, it's pretty much sold out of the limited edition launch edition of the new 500. Only 500 examples of each limited edition 500 La Prima are available for each European country. But Luca Napolitano, head of EMEA Fiat and Arbath Brands, said that very few are now available because they've all been snapped up. This means in just a few months around 13,000 Fiat 500Es have been ordered, although deliveries have not yet started. Regular non-launch edition versions of the Fiat 500 will follow soon with a lower price tag. I should also of course note that the new Fiat 500 is only available as an electric vehicle. We're still waiting for Tesla to have its upcoming investor battery day, something we've been expecting to take place before the end of this month. At it, we are also expecting to hear about the brand new cell chemistry developed by the Tesla-sponsored Jeff Darn Research Group. That new cobalt-free chemistry is said to be the underlying secret behind Tesla's promised one million mile battery, so called because it's said to last one million miles. While the details have yet to be discussed by Tesla, you can read the various papers and patents by Dan and his colleagues, we heard this week that Tesla is collaborating with Chinese battery firm Cattle on commercializing that battery with a view to manufacturing and installing it in Chinese market Teslas. Obviously, we'll hear more about this battery at the Tesla Investor Day, so watch this space. Over the last couple of months, Lordstown Motors has been steadily drip feeding us information about its upcoming endurance electric pickup, or Ute, a vehicle I would love to see come to New Zealand, but one which I'm not sure will as of yet. So far, we've seen snippets of camouflage prototypes undergoing testing, as well as followed the company CEO on a tour of the production facility, where the electric vehicles will be made. This week, we got some more information concerning the in-wheel motors that Lordstown will be using to power its truck. Built in-house, they're going to be built under license from Slovenian firm Elefine, one of the world's leaders in in-wheel technology. And sorry if I have said that incorrectly. My Slovenian is not so good. Production is said to begin in the next six months as part of the pre-production process. And Finally, as we push towards a brave new world of cleaner, greener transportation, many people have questioned why we are still making massive electric vehicles that are basically like the cars we owned before, but with electric drivetrains instead of internal combustion engine ones. Why not go for something smaller instead, especially for commuting? Over the years, we've seen plenty of takes on this idea of smaller vehicles, and I've owned several of them myself. But now a new company from Poland has unveiled the Trigo EV. When it's driving at speed, it, like the Renault Twizy, has outboard wheels that give it stability. 
And unlike the Twizy, it can lean into corners, which improves its overall handling. But its special trick is extremely clever. It can fold its wheels in traffic, allowing you to filter through traffic like a motorcycle and park in super small spaces. It is amazing. It's super clever, provided, of course, you can safely lane split. And on that note, we're done for this week. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? That's if you haven't already. It's super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty fossil fuels and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for many years to come. We're going to be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, stay safe, remember to wash your hands and keep healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.